Hello everybody, this is Niklas Huschenbeet and I'm going to cover today's game of the day from round 5 of the Bilbao Masters. And for the fifth time in a row, we're going to see a game of the world champion Magnus Carlsen. So far in the tournament, being involved in every decisive game, we'll see if this was the case today as well. He was playing against his rival, Anish Giri, against whom he has never won a game in a classical tournament. Anish Gier won the very first game, in the very first encounter in YKNC 2011 and then drew all the other games and of course has the bragging rights against the world champion. So let's get started. Anish Gier with the white pieces started off with d4 and out of the opening immediately a surprise. Carlsen going for the accepted queen's gambit here with d takes c4 and now knight f3 and a6. e3 and here Maybe a second surprise, bishop g4, which is not the main move. Typical queen's gambit except it goes knight f6 and then bishop takes c4, e6, castle, c5. And white has a variety of options at his disposal. Another move in this position, which has been popular a few years ago, is the move b5. Black just tries to hang on to this pawn and equalize. But bishop g4, and that must have come as a surprise to Giri. He took on c4. Now it's important for black to play e6 first because after knight f6, there would be bishop takes f7, a common tactical motive, followed by knight e5 check and picking up the bishop on g4, gaining an extra pawn for white. So instead, black played e6 h3, bishop h5, never hurts to push the bishop back a little bit, knight c3, knight c6. So this is quite unusual for the queen's gambit, accepted. Knight to c6, usually black always tries to attack the center by playing c5. But in this case, black likes to develop the knight to his natural square here on c6, keeping an eye on the center, and black wants to attack the center later with e5. So quite a different queen's gambit, accepted castle, knight f6, and here you choose the setup with b3. And I'm not sure about that. I think it would have been better to play rook e1, preparing e4 in some variations. For example, if Carlsen played like he did in the game with bishop d6, well, I can now play g4 followed by e4. And that already gives white quite a nice position, because after d take e5, well, I can just Take on e5, knight takes e5, knight takes e5, bishop takes e5, and just f4 already. And this is quite nice because, well, some problems here with f5 also in the position. So if bishop d6 is not as good as it is in the game, then black already has to make a compromise here, play bishop e7. and. Here as well, white could follow up with g4 and e4, claim the space, claim the center. It makes a lot of sense because all the white pieces are on the natural squares. White has the lead in development, so why not play in the center already and get the most out of the opening as possible. So b3 may be a little bit too tame here. Bishop d6, bishop b2, castle, now bishop e2, unpinning the knight on f3. Queen e7, now you can see black gets kind of his perfect setup, the bishop on d6, queen on e7, all supporting e5 in the future. Rook c1 and rook a d8. And now Giri played knight e5, which is exchanging some material. As an alternative, knight a4 was possible, aiming to put a knight on c5 and also having this idea of bishop takes a6, but in fact black can just react quite coolly with knight d7 because now after bishop takes a6, b takes a6, rook takes c6, black can react with e5 and initiate an attack against the white king or take the initiative here. So probably here white should opt for something else, also knight e5 here. And it turns out overall that white didn't take much out of the opening if anything at all. And really that seems to be, the, the reason seems to be the setup with b3 and bishop b2 which was not ambitious enough. 
So knight e5 was played, knight takes e5 here already, Carlsen could have opted for bishop takes e2 and the position would be also just completely equal here after mass exchanges. Nothing for black to worry about. But I think Carlsen wanted to have some more potential in the position and that's why he played knight takes e5. Bishop takes h5 and knight g6. During the live commentary I want to keep the bishop pair of course by playing bishop f3. Giri took on g6, just to make that clear, that was the game. But after bishop f3, black can attack the center right away with c5 and is also doing absolutely fine. So Giri took on g6, h takes g6 and queen f3. Now c6 and rook fd1. And maybe here something else. Rook fd1, such a natural move, but what we'll see is that the white position just becomes a little bit more difficult to play, a little bit uncomfortable. Maybe something like knight e4 here. Just exchanging those knights. Or also quite possible would be to go knight a4 here to be able to immediately exchange bishops here once black plays e5 and then put the knight on c5. Still there's a lot of potential in this position. It's not automatically a draw, of course. Okay, but rook fd1 and now e5. Black has achieved a goal, attacks the center and has equalized completely here. No worries for black. And now d takes e5. Knight e4 would have been another option, but already all these positions just, even though equal, seem a little bit more pleasant for black. Here, for example, queen c4 check, queen f7. And black can also try here for a long time. So Giri takes on e5, but now that's why I want to play knight a4, knight c5, because right now it becomes a little bit inconvenient. How am I going to get rid of the strong bishop on e5? If I play knight a4, I always end up with my knight kind of out of play on b2. So Giri for now just took on d8 once and then played rook d1 and probably was thinking hmm, this is going to head to a draw soon but not with Carlsen. B5 is, sh are sh is showing his ambitions here already pushing the pawns and that's the advantage black has in this position. He has the queen side majority. Those three pawns against the white two pawns. And why is this an advantage? Well Black can much easier build a passed pawn than white can. White has the king side majority. And if white want to create a passed pawn, he would need to push those pawns. And by doing so, he would weak weakness on king. And also, you need to consider that the black king is already perfectly placed for stopping any kind of advances on the king side. No matter if we're looking at a position in the, in the end game or still a middle game, the king is better placed to cope with any advances here. Whereas the white king is far away from the queen side, obviously. So this is the tiny edge black has. It's not, a mu it's not much, but it's something to work with for Carlsen and he's trying to make the most out of it. Okay, for starters, what happens after queen takes c6? Well, black can play b4 and this wins a piece because after rook takes c8, queen takes c8, the knight cannot move to a4 because of checkmate. And that's why Anish Giri played g3. And I think this is a first inaccuracy here. It just weakens the position in front of the white king just a tiny bit. Not much, but it doesn't, it isn't necessary. Instead, simply playing queen e2 here and if c5 and taking on d8, bringing the king a little bit closer and you just have avoided this weakness in front of your own king. And we'll see Carson is very good in provoking more and more weaknesses like that. And sometimes you don't need to actually provoke anything. Right here, Giri just played it by himself. So with pawn moves you always need to be very careful because well, you can never take them back, right? So every pawn of kind of creates a weakness. You cannot fix it easily. Rook takes d1, queen takes d1, c5 for the pushing the pawns forward on the queen side makes a lot of sense. 
now queen d3, king h7, nice prophylactic move, just getting the king out of the play already, away from any checks, slowly improving the position. Now, he replaced knight d1. And, but it's difficult to recommend anything to him anyway. Queen c2 maybe, but queen d7, the position is just uncomfortable to play for white. So knight d1, that's what I was talking about earlier. Now the knight ends up on b2 and is awkwardly placed. It's out of the game for now, it's not taking part. And black is trying to capitalize on that. Queen e6, nice move. And now here we see why I was criticizing g3. Now you have to battle with this pawn on h3. And the question is how to defend it. If king g2, black can set up nicely with knight e4 followed by f5. And black has a nice advantage. Giri played g4. But it would have been better to do a counterattack here with queen c2. This is not a human move to play because this looks at first sight quite dangerous here with knight g4, threatening checkmate, but it all works out just right for white. Knight d1 and the king can go to e2 and is safe enough. So probably sh black should up for knight e4 and then knight d3, c4, knight f4, queen c6, takes takes and knight e2 and white has this c pawn under control but black of course can still try for a long time. And set Giri went g4 and this is further weakening his, his position in front of his king every pawn move I told you. So it's making his task, his defensive task, more and more difficult. Queen c6, trying to immediately exploit the newly created weaknesses by, by threatening queen f3. Now queen e2 prevents this, and knight e4. And here we see a lot of alternatives for black as well. For example, here black could have also opted for knight d7, aiming to bring the knight to e5 and f3 and g5, fixing the pawn structure here on the king's side. It all looks very nice and all these variations black has a nice edge, but nothing too much yet. So knight e4, queen c2 and now knight g5 as well. Here black had the option to go knight d6 to further push the pawn, but I really like knight g5 because it is provoking another weakness. It is actually forcing another weakness. Threatening, of course, to take on h3 as well as bring the queen closer. So white only has one move, which is f4. The point is that if black now took on h3, which Carlson did not, then white could play king h2 and the knight would be trapped. Still, black would get enough pawns here after a move like queen e6, but of course, this is not something you need to do. Queen f3, by the way, doesn't work well for black because of queen g2 and once again the knight cannot get out. So Carlson played knight e6. Once again queen f3 is the threat so queen e2 or queen g2 uh, excuse me queen g2 was played and now queen d6. Even here black had an alternative queen b6 to go over a5 and to invade the white position this manner. Queen f2, queen a5, knight d1 and c4. Black really had a lot of tempting choices. But I think everything Carson is doing here is, is, is absolutely fine and he's playing a very strong game. Queen e2 and now queen d5 was played by Carson. We also looked at g5 which looks like a tempting move to further open up the white pawns here, especially since white cannot play f5 on the account of queen g3, but white can exchange queens with queen d3. And this endgame seems to hold for white. If g takes f4 now, knight takes f4 is possible, and the pawn endgame would be drawn. And if c4, then white can take, and this will also lead to a drawn position here. Knight takes a6 is possible and knight b4 back and white has his own pass pawn now on the a-file, the king close enough and that promises him enough play to, to draw. So 
So Carlson played queen d5, now queen g2, and returned to d6. Surprisingly here, Giri did not repeat moves as well. Queen e2 would have led to the same position we just saw, and Carlson would have needed to come up with something else, right? He would not have settled for a draw. But Giri played h4, which was not necessary. Another pawn move, another weakening move, right? So now knight c7, and here Giri goes even further, he plays h5. Also, that was not necessary, but yeah, with the pawn h4 already, it is a weakness, no matter if on h4 or on h5. Takes, takes, and queen e7. Here once again, and we'll see this again and again, there is this option for black to go into a knight endgame. It always has to be calculated very carefully. So Carlson played queen e7, but queen d5 was another move. If queen takes d5, probably white should go for this, then probably white can hold here. King f2, king h6. This is the problem now, right? Suddenly with the pawn on h5 instead of h3, it is always very weak and can be just um, attacked and captured by black. But it seems white is in time to create enough counterplay here by bringing the knight to e5 and then winning a pawn on f7. Of course, black has a nice advanced pawn all the way on c3, but it seems that white can defend here. So Carlson goes for queen e7, attacking a pawn on e3, white plays queen f3. Now queen d7, a lot of maneuvering around, seeing how black can make progress. Now queen d2 is a threat once again. And knight d1, good move by Arnish, finally bringing the knight back from b2 into the game. Queen d5, another strong move by the world champion. Now the knight endgame would be good for black because the knight is rather pass passive on d1 and black is in time to just pick this pawn up. Queen e2 was played, and now queen f5, and I think this is an inaccuracy. Here, Carlsen should have moved knight e8 and bring the knight to f6. Just very simple plan, pick up this pawn on h5. There's nothing white can do about it. Knight f2, knight f6, white can try to find salvation in the knight endgame here, but now Black doesn't take on h5, but just plays knight e4 and picks the h5 pawn up with the king, secures the knight on e5 beautifully, and I think black has good chances here. It's not clear yet because white, of course, also has a nice outpost here, but I believe black has excellent chances. Also, knight c3 would be possible picking up the a2 pawn, and it seems to be too much for white to handle. So Carlsen probably saw this idea to bring the knight over to f6, but he wanted to do it in a more active way by playing queen f5, opening the d5 square up and bring the knight to f6 via this route. But it takes one more move and this makes a huge difference. So knight f2, knight d5, now king g2, good move. Getting the king a little bit closer. And now Carlsen pretty much immediately blitzed out c4. And it's difficult to say. Knight f6 would have been the other option here. But now we have the same position, just black has spent one, one more move and white has improved his king position. And that makes a difference, of course. So here after knight e4, king f3, f5, knight e5, king h6. Now White can bring over the king. And in all these lines, black is just one move behind, right? Even here, if knight c3, then king to d2. Knight takes a2, knight d7. And yeah, black can try this, certainly. And I, I would even say that this might be a better, better chance than what happened in the game. But ultimately, I think white should be able to hold in these lines. 
but it seems to me a much better try. Well, especially in hindsight. That's easy to say than c4. c4 looks strong, right? Pushing a pawn forward, increasing the pressure. Um, but it turns out here, especially since Giri had a lot of time to think now, he's reached the 40th move, extra hour on the clock, and now he took his time and calculated everything, and just from here on, just finds all the correct moves, right? That was just a little bit unfortunate for Carlson as well, I think. So first of all, what's going on here? Why can't white take on c4? Well, simple, there's a fork on e3. And here, very important move, king g3. But it makes a lot of sense because by moving the king out of this fork, now white threatens to take on c4. Now c3. And I'm wondering if maybe black should play a move like knight b6 here. I didn't look at this beforehand, but it already feels not right to play a move like knight b6, remove the knight from the center. But what happens after c3 is really black doesn't get any shot at, at advantage anymore. And this should be also fine for white. Knight h3, trying to activate the knight to g5. Yeah. Knight b6 can't be it either. c3, queen takes a6, and it all just works out for white. White grabs this pawn, and the pawn is that in most lines, white can exchange queens on d3 now, especially because in all these knight end games, white has this pawn on a2, which is just a huge asset, because it can always bind the knight and distract the knight, and black has to worry about his a pawn. So black played c2. Knight b4 doesn't do anything really because white can play queen c4, now c2, and just attack the knight on b4 by playing a3. And black doesn't have anything better to go knight d5, and that actually transposes almost to what we see in the game. Only difference pawn is on a3 instead of a2, but that really doesn't change anything. So in the game, black played c2, queen d3, and now Carlson played knight e7. Queen takes d3 was another possibility, but this endgame is rather easily drawn for white. Just play a4, knight c4, and now stop knight b2. That would be unfortunate to lose the a4 pawn, so knight c1. And here, there's nothing black can do. White just protects the h5 pawn and like I said now the knight always has to watch over this a4 pawn and black cannot make any progress. So Carlson tried knight e7. Now the pawn is obviously white cannot take on f5 because black takes back with check and queen's next move. So white has to do something else and has to cover the c1 square now and he does this by playing queen c4. And now, also threatening e4, followed by winning this pawn on c2. So black has to do something, and really there's not much he can do. He has to give up the c2 pawn, as unfortunate as it is for black. Still, it's not over yet. Check, but counter check, knight f5, king g2, next check, and suddenly white has to play only moves. There's only one move here. King h2, after any other move, white loses on the spot. King f3, for example, knight h4, followed by picking up the queen. And the same is true for king h1, knight g3. So king h2 works though, queen g3 check, and it looks quite good for black here with the active piece. And we all know queen and knight, they work particularly well together, especially when it comes to mating attacks. But Giri is just finding all the right moves here. Queen e2 was the only move to maintain equality. And now knight takes e3 and knight e4. Another important move. After knight d3, white still would have suffered. <laughs> because after knight g4, we'll end up in, in a position here where Black can try on for a while this endgame, two against one. And yeah, 
I'm sure Geary wouldn't have enjoyed this, but probably would have hold it as well. But knight e4 makes it easier. Here, black also gets an endgame two against one, but not a queen endgame. It's a knight endgame. We see it here, white exchanges the queens on h2. And this knight endgame is <clears throat> easily drawn because, once again, white has this asset on a2. And in general, a or pawns on the edge of the board are the biggest enemies to the knight because the knight is a short-term piece, a short, short range piece. So it has to go all the way over to the queen side here. And obviously then if the knight is tied to the a pawn, black cannot win with the two connected pawns on a g and f file against king and knight. It's just not possible. So the rest was rather easy. We can go through the moves pretty quickly. Giri sets up the blockade here on dark squares. And there's nothing Carlson could do. And knight h3 and a draw was agreed. If f4, white well, can just play king g4, pick up the pawn. So simple. Also, there's the threat of king g5 right now. And like I said, if the knight ever approaches knight e4 in any similar fashion, white well, can just push the a5, a pawn to a5, and well, black has to soon re return and keep an eye on the pawn. And black has never enough time to run all the way over. Of course, it would take way, way too long. In the meantime, white would just pick up the two pawns here. And it is a draw. So Carlson was able, no, sorry. Giri was able to stood his ground, to stand his ground. It's been a long day. And he managed to draw and keep his streak against Carlson, keep his plus one score. Carlson pressed, Carlson tried everything he could and it was a great game by both players, really. Because first Carlson, out of a seemingly equal position, got the most out of it he could, well, almost. And then Giri, managed to defend very well, just found all the right moves, sequence of all the best moves. Very high quality game by both players. I think the moment where Carlsen could have gotten a little bit more was with this maneuver knight e8, knight f6, instead of playing queen f5, and then probably heading into this knight end game, nonetheless, with knight f6 instead of c4, would have also given him some more chances. But, well, you can't just find it every single best move, even if you're the world champion. And even in this shape, even though he's pretty close to doing so in the previous games as well. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this analysis. Let me know in the comments. I got a lot of feedback from the last video, so I hope to implement some of that. So just let me know how I did today. And then tomorrow's the rest day on Monday, but the next round will be round six on Tuesday. Bilbao Masters with Jan Gustafsson and myself. Goodbye.